let's say hello to the one and only Mr. Larry Lamb. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm very well, how are you? Not so bad. Yes, thank you so much for coming on the show. I've honestly wanted you on for a very long time. Pleasure. It's good to get you on. Now, you've been on, on our screens since the 70s, so a very long time, and so I'd consider you a true acting legend, but I want to know, <laughs> how did you start, you know, acting in the industry? When would you say for you, you got your big break? Well, it was all by accident, really. I, uh, I, got, I got involved in amateur theatre years ago while I was travelling around the world, and, uh, and in the end got an opportunity to have a go at an audition to become a professional actor. Um, so I suppose your first your first big break is the first time you get a part in a in, a, in an amateur theatre production. Um, so that, that that started things moving. I mean, until you've actually tried acting, you don't know you know whether it's something that you think you can do. Um, so that was the first big break. Then the next big break was getting in on an audition, which actually led to me getting my first job as a professional actor. Um, so it's a kind of a series of breaks, really. You, you know, there's so much, so much of what happens is is uh, involves luck. And what I would love to ask you, because I've asked this to a kind of few of the guests that we've had on who are who are actors. Um, what do you have a preference over theatre and television acting? I mean, what would you say is different about the two? Well, <laughs> acting in the theatre is like tightrope walking with no safety net, <laughs> and acting in front of a camera. You've got a safety net. If it goes wrong, you can do it again. So do you have a preference over them? I mean, what what do you get the biggest buzz from doing? Kind of television acting or the, or the live theatre stage I, stuff? I think I think there's. It's too easy to say you get you get a real buzz out of doing it in front of a live audience, but th that's easy to forget that when you actually film something, there is always an audience there. Yeah. You know, from the director on down, you've got the whole crew are watching everything you're doing. Um, so there is an element of performing involved in that. And, of course, the difference is that when you've done something really well on film, you can see it. When you've done something really well in the theatre, the audience sees it, but you don't. So, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of different, different rewards for the two things in different ways. Um, so you, I can't really say what I prefer. If you've done something really well, at least when you've done it on film, you can watch it and see that you've done something well. I mean, what what does it feel like when you watch yourself back? Because a lot of people, if they listen to themselves back or watch themselves back, they kind of they, they get a bit uncomfortable with it. Have you yeah. ever watched any, say, for instance... I think it's, I think it's probably the same for most actors. Yeah. You, you become hyper, hyper, hypercritical, and very rarely are you actually... I suppose, you know, there, there are people around on a big ego trip, but, you know, most of the time you look at it and you think, well, I could have done that better, and why did I do it like that? So you just torture yourself to, de to death. And you never look as good as you want to look. You can never look as good as you want to look. Well, I've got to admit, when you're on TV, you look awesome. But I want to talk about your time on Gavin and Stacey. I mean, what a phenomenon that became to be. I mean, did you ever expect that show to become as successful as it has? Because it's almost become as big as the likes of Only Fools and Horses and the, and the big um, comedy shows out there. Yeah. Um, well, I must say, it was uh, it was a, it was a a sort of a gradual realisation that this was something that was rather special. I mean, everybody that read it at the beginning thought that it was very good, but we'd all been in things that were very good, and sometimes things that are very good don't necessarily finish up as good on the screen as they were on the page. Um, but this was this sort of drip effect that you kind of figured, ah, by the way people are responding to this, it's obviously um, as good as I thought it was. And, you know, the BBC were very caref careful and clever about the way they released it because, in actual fact, before it went on BBC Three, they slid it out on the internet. So they kind of gave people a, a little bit of a peek of it early on and then gradually built it up through their system to where it, you know, finished up being what it was on BBC One, the big star show. And how did you get the part on that? I mean, were you approached to be on it? Did you have to audition? I mean, how did you get the yeah, role? Yeah, well, you know, there were, there were, you know, there were, I think there was probably, uh, well, the two that wrote it, Ruth Jones and uh, James Corden, they obviously wrote parts for themselves. Um, they wrote the part for Alison Steadman. I think they wrote the part for, uh, for Rob Brydon because they were mates. Um, but I think everybody else had to, had to audition. I certainly had to audition and... In fact, I had to audition twice because the first time I screwed it up. Um, and uh, and then I went back a second time, and by this time they'd, they'd, they'd 
contracted Allison, and so the second time I went to talk to them, I actually did a, a couple of scenes with Allison, and it, and and once we were acting with each other, then it sort of all clicked, and uh, and that's how it came about. But it wasn't a straightforward, it wasn't a straightforward thing of them phoning up and offering you a part by any manner of means. And I mean, what's that like? Because of you, you are a well-established actor. So, to, to, when you find auditioning now, do you do you kind of get parts quite easily, or do you still get the um, you know? Because some actors do get some rejection at times, you know. Yeah, you get you get rejected all the time in the acting business. That's the problem with it. You know, you're only ever really going to get about one in ten jobs as an actor. Mm. You know, so you've got to do ten a minimum of ten auditions to get one job. So you know, rejection's what it's all about. Now, you must get asked this question quite a lot, but do you ever see that Gavin and Stacey could in time maybe come back for another episode or another series, or do you think maybe that that is the end of it now? You never, you never ever, ever in, in the entertainment business can say never and, mm. and, and look at the whole thing with the Monty Pythons. With that know? coming back. And uh, all of a sudden, that thing that was never, ever, I'm sure those people were asked the question wherever they went over the years and years and years, and all of a sudden, you know, 45 years down the line... They're um, going to do a live show. And Open All Hours is back on Christmas Day as well on BBC One after since the 70s, so that's coming back with David Jason. Yeah. That's another example of that. But um, obviously now we've, we've got to go on. You played one of the best television villains ever in a soap opera, being Archie Mitchell in EastEnders. Yeah. But was obviously being in a soap opera is so different to your other acting parts, so was this something that you had to think a lot about, or did you just were you just so up for the challenge of being on such one of the biggest um, soap operas around? Well, I think the thing is that when you've been acting for, you know, for a whole lifetime, a career, you just take each job as it comes along. You know, he's a baddie, so you get on and play a baddie, and you just hope it's a well-written part, which, you know, which is where I was very lucky. It was an extremely well-designed and well-written character. So, you know, really, in the end, it's like joining up the dots. I mean, Archie had some incredible storylines. I mean, you won awards for this part, and you honestly played it so well. But for you as an actor, some of the storylines were, were very tough, including um, your on-screen daughters. Yeah. And, I mean, so how do you find that when you're playing such a role with someone who's quite, you know, a big villain? I mean, how do you find that experience? Well, I mean, it's, it, it, it's a real... It's a pleasure. That's what you want. You want to be yeah. stretched all the time. You want to be playing things that make you think. That's the idea of it. It's when... When things are not well written, um, they get boring. And next up, what's what's upcoming projects do you have? Well, my main focus now is I do a radio show every Sunday on LBC ninety seven point three um, that goes out, you know, on on all over the world and all over well all over the world on the internet. Um, and and I get to talk about things that interest me, things in the news, things that upset me, things that please me, and talk with with people all over the country that phone in to to discuss topics that we have a mutual interest in so that that's kind of my that's my job i do that every week and you know i spend most of the week building up to towards that and then i i do um interview jobs for the one show um i'm about to do um a little i'm about to do a radio show an internet online radio show with my with my son um and where we're going to be uh we're doing a sort of a a, a, a pilot for a a monday a, a, a monday morning fun show. I'm going to have to tune into that and learn some tips from you guys, because you have a good kind of um, rapport and chemistry yeah, with do. each other. we have a great time. Um, uh, we're both really looking forward to it, because I've, you know, I've, I've, now I've started to work on radio, and he's done a lot of radio, and, and somebody said, you know, we're, what about doing something together? It's really good. Well, Larry, honestly, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show, and obviously I'm going to tune into a radio show as well and hear you. Good. So thank you so much for joining us and taking the time and joining us on our fourth year anniversary show here today. Right, well, happy anniversary. Thank you very much, and we'll hopefully speak to you again soon. All the very best. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.